China's countryside is changing fast. Swarms of drones are taking over pesticide spraying. From livestock to produce, AI is tracking everything. With the help of government subsidies and initiatives, jobs that were labor intensive for thousands of years are being automated, and technology is becoming a fixture of everyday life in rural China. But why is the government throwing money in agricultural technology? And are there any hidden costs to modernization? So we travel to rural China to meet farmers who use drones and the companies that make them. Huang Jianfeng was a farm in Zhejiang, about an hour's drive from Shanghai. He has 24 drones in total for his 133 hectare field. Tulajia,拆安家,收割家,就是实时查看他们在工作情况。那还可以通过我们当地的农机管家平台,实时看到这一天他们的工作的质量以及 Guo Jianhua and his family own a lemon farm in Guangzhou. Like Huang, he also uses drone to water crops and spray pesticides. Not only does it reduce the use of potentially harmful chemicals, but also means they don't need to rely on seasonal labor. Huang and Guo both use drones made by XAG, a Guangzhou-based company. Justin Gong, vice president and co-founder, said drones save not only labor, but resources. Using drones to spray chemical can, ser can save 30% to 40% of chemical during, the, during its uh, service and 90% of water. So that's why we, we have serviced so far, we have serviced 21 million hectares of land worldwide, and we have saved 18,000 tons of chemical already. China uses more pesticides than any other country in the world, three times more than the US and Europe relative to the size of their agricultural land. This poses a danger to the environment and public health. There is a strong focus to avoid environment issues, so non-source point pollution, we would call that any leaching of pesticides or fertilizers into groundwater from agriculture. That is a, a big uh, issue in China to ensure then at the next point the food safety, so we don't want to have any food issues in terms of pesticides again or even microbes in the food. The government is trying to limit the use of pesticides and fertilizers by issuing guidelines and phasing out the most dangerous chemicals. Despite these efforts, the overuse of pesticides remains a problem. Implementing changes in China's agricultural production is a monumental task. Not just because China's countryside is vast in size, but because it is run by 200 million farmers. In China, we have these very small scale production which makes it very difficult in terms of yeah, uh, economies of scale for investing into any technology and also makes it very difficult for farmers really to come to a middle class income based on this. China's 200 million farmers each tend on average 2.5 hectares of land. This is tiny compared to the US where farmers tend to 167 hectares on average. China's small farms often don't yield enough crops for a middle-class income, let alone by a 90,000 yuan drone. By saving on labor costs and pesticides, farmers can get a return on their investment pretty quickly. We have tested the 
一天三个人做一辆，也就是二十亩左右。如果无人机的话，一天做一辆，也就一百多亩。如果长期累积下来的话，用无人机那个成本更低。The government is facilitating purchases of agritech with subsidies. Here, the production, the percentage of the production, um, is the part of the production is the agricultural production, the part is the federal production. For example, we are producing the agricultural production, it is the federal production, it is two hundred thousand dollars. The agricultural production is two hundred thousand dollars. There are two hundred thousand dollars, which is the federal production. When you are producing the agricultural production, you have to buy the agricultural production. You have to buy the agricultural production. 农业局申请，我要打这块地，你要打多少亩，你要去备案，要登记，然后他们那边会派人过来核实，然后他就按我们的飞飞行轨迹那个图去判定了多少亩。China's countryside has been emptying as more and more people seek jobs in the big cities. Those left behind are only getting older. This is yet another reason why these farmers welcome technology on the farm. 现在，五十岁以下基本上不种田了。呃，这样就是农民种地，没没种地没有人了。那么逐步引进科技，就是我们减少劳动劳动力那个支出。It seems that part of the goal is to take the emptying out of China's agriculture a step further. We don't want to stop this trend urbanization, but we need someone to grow food for us in the future. So the trend will be. In the future, will be less and less people left in the village. And they will be professional practitioners of agriculture, smart agriculture. 就通过这只是搬迁，搬迁了以后就是那个农民那个房屋没有了，没有了。通过土地整理，就是这个成片的大的大的区域。那通过成片的大的区域，可以通过科技，嗯，提高生产力。原来一个人管五百亩地，现在so the question now becomes: If China is rid of the task of farming altogether, what does that mean for the environment? We spoke to some experts, and here's what they told us. It doesn't necessarily make the soil better or anything, but it does. It distributes the chemicals better. So in that sense, it, it's much better than um, manually applying chemicals. So the government's attitude is not so much to work with nature, but try to make it as efficient as possible, like the way you would treat a machine. Well, that's certainly true in a way, and it's an attitude that has harmed China's natural environment in the past, but it doesn't fully describe what's going on in the administration. I think we, we can agree that there are uh, certain ideological forces at play or certain overarching uh, forces at play, but I would feel extremely uncomfortable to suggest that these ideologies characterize the entirety of uh, the policies that we see on the ground, because indeed we see a lot of conflicting observations on the ground about which direction China is going in the context of sustainability. So this ambiguity is affecting people, especially young people like Guo on the farm. He doesn't want his children to do manual labor in the fields, but he also can't foresee what will happen in 10 years. I don't want to do it because I don't want to do it. Because the children are still young, but they are still young. After 10 years later, 都不用人手去干这个，说不定以后会基本上全自动去管理，这个也不好说。以后以后的，是如果像目前这样子的话，我就不想他们再继续干。